everyone, welcome to another Router Guides video. My name is Humphrey Chung and we're going to continue on our ARP series and we're going to cover how ARP looks from a com command line perspective. So we've got two routers connected by fast ethernet. I already have my IP addresses popped in there. It's all ones and then all ones and a two at the end for router two. My interfaces are in the no shut state. So if you, if you watched the previous video, you saw that an ARP request is when router 1 wants to talk to router 2 or a device wants to talk to any other device on the same Ethernet segment. It knows the IP address but it doesn't know the MAC address. So you need the MAC address to send there. And so what it's going to do is send an ARP request and try to find the MAC address. Once it gets the MAC address it's put into an ARP table, an ARP cache. So we're looking at router 1. If I do a show ARP I've got my own address, all ones in there, so that would make sense that I would know my own address. So you could see the IP address there. You could see the associated hardware address and it will show you what interface it's on. Notice I don't have any information yet for R2, which is address of 1112. But we're going to change that. So let's say on R1 I want to ping towards router 2, so I'm going to ping 1112. And what you'll notice is the first ping is going to die. You see that dot there. And the reason that dot is there is because it is trying to resolve the hardware address, the MAC address, of the other side. Once it gets the MAC address, it then puts the MAC address in its table, and then it's able to send a successful ping. So let's show ARP on here, and you can see now we have another entry in the table. It's all ones and the two at the end. We have a different hardware address that's from the other side and it's saying it goes out fast Ethernet 00. Now because we were able to get that MAC address from router 2, router 2 is also going to have a corresponding entry for router 1 and we could see this going back to router 2. Let's go to router 2 and I'll do a show ARP and you could see router 2 has an entry for router 1 it's all ones and the hardware address and the fast Ethernet address. So when you send that ARP request, not only are you grabbing the MAC address for the other side, you're also telling the other side about you. So it actually gives the information for both sides, which is pretty nice. Now if we wait long enough, what's going to happen is these entries in the ARP table are going to time out. So if we're looking on router 2, you will see that the all ones address will eventually time out. And if we're looking at router 2 or router 1, you'll see that the entry for router 2 will time out. Okay, so if we wait long enough, uh, about five minutes, we will see that this thing will time out. And already you could see under the age category, it's telling us how long this entry has been in the table. So, so far it's been about one minute. And I'm not going to wait for five minutes for this thing to time out, but you, you would get the point. All right. So before you can send any type of IP packet to the other side, you need the MAC address. And one of the things is if you can't ping an address and you're, you're going through all these troubleshooting steps and you sure, you know, you're sure you have the IP, one of the things to do is just do a show ARP and see if you have the IP address and the MAC address in your table. Right. Another thing to do with show ARP, you can do show ARP right here, question mark, pipe I, and if you're looking for a particular IP address, you could pop that in there, all ones and a two. Show ARP, pipe I, one, 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 two. And that will give you the information just for that particular entry. All right, so that was a quick video of ARP and looking at the ARP table on a Cisco router. Thanks for watching.